what's the distinction there? Um, hello, Tom. It's great to be on the show. Um, well, there are a whole combination of factors. All countries across the globe have been impacted by the consequences of the pandemic, supply chain disruptions, and also by the consequences of the Ukrainian war, which has pushed commodity and food prices higher. But saying that, some countries have been able to keep their domestic inflationary pressures in check. In contrast, here in the UK, and unfortunately in one or two other Western economies, monetary policy has been pretty poor and ineffective over the last year and a half. So if we look at the UK in particular, we have been hit by what's called a supply side shock, something outside our control. But we have also fed domestic inflationary pressures because last year, the Bank of England incorrectly, and at the time quite arrogantly, decided that they were going to continue to keep their foot on the accelerator, keep policy rates at record low levels, pump even more money into the economy through quantitative easing. When they should have been tightening, when the economy was starting to recover and it was clear inflation was picking up. Now we're in the challenge of the Bank of England having to make up for that lost time, shall we say. But to conclude the answer, when we take it more broadly in terms of the cost of living crisis that's hitting everyone, we have three components. The higher fuel prices outside the UK's control, the rising inflation, which has been fed by those fuel prices, but we've also made it worse for ourselves through ineffective policy. And the third component is higher taxes. So fuel prices, higher inflation and higher taxes have all combined to hit people pretty hard.